everyone. Welcome. Um, while I'm waiting for everyone to join us, uh, why don't you go ahead and just say hi and uh, let me know where you're from. Um, that way I'll know that you're here and also we can share a little bit. Uh, today I am coming to you live from uh, Always in Stitches, which is a quilt store where I work part time. And it's located in Noblesville, Indiana, uh, which is just a little bit north of Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, I'm doing that because I'm working part time at the quilt store. We're open, but not open to the public. Um, we're, we're coordinating mask making efforts and making kits and collecting masks and doing things like that. So that's why I'm here. But I'm taking a break so I could do this live video for you. Um, hey, hello, just say hello so I know you're there. I'm glad you could join me. Um, today it is, hi April, great, hello from Mesa. Um, we have very cold temperatures here right now, so uh, I bet it's a little bit different where you are. Just waiting for a few people to join us. Um, hi, Susan. Hey, oh, from outside the Boston area. I hope you're staying safe. Um, like I said, I'm uh, from Indianapolis, Indiana, but I'm here at Always in Stitches, which is in Noblesville, Indiana, just north of Indianapolis. And it's a little cold here right now. Um, I'm at the quilt store, we're not open but we're working on making masks and coordinating that effort. Uh, today is part two of Quilting with Batiks. Hi, Barb. Welcome. Um, and if you missed part one, don't worry about it. Um, Facebook Live allows you to save your videos, so after this session is over, you can go back and watch the part one video if you want. I'm starting my stopwatch so I have a general idea how long I'm taking. I don't want to take up too much time, but I do want to cover some basics today. Today we're going to be covering how to sew with, or how to quilt with um, batiks. So let me summarize a little bit about what we learned in part one. In part one, we learned a lot about how batiks are made and also um, what they're good for. Um, for example, because uh, the way Batiks are made, um, they're boiled during the dyeing process, so that kind of uh, shrinks them a little bit, and that also tightens the, the weave. So because they're very dense, um, they are good for things like raw edge, raw edge applique. But also, because of the way they're dyed, uh, the front and the back of a batik is pretty much the same. So that makes them real easy for doing things like paper piecing. Uh, this turned out to be fairly popular with the last video, so I thought I'd show it again. Um, this is going to be a pattern on my store uh, by the end of the year. It's called uh, Fall Romance 2. Uh, batiks are also especially useful for uh, art quilts, like this one. Notice how the batik, which typically has a watercolor feel, uh, really adds depth to the background of this iris. Batiks are also great when you want a really strong color because, again, the way they're dyed, they are just really vibrant, as you can tell from this example. So I have to reach out a camera. My setup's a little bit different here because I'm working at the shop. Um, I'm in one of the classrooms. Um, oh, I did, however, uh, want to also talk about the fact that batiks, again, because they're very dense, they're also very strong and they can endure the wear and tear of bags. So if you want to make a bag, I do recommend a batik because your bag will last when you make it out of it. Uh, this is a shop sample that I took off the floor <laughs> just to show you. Um, batiks also are great. Oh, here's another. Sorry, I took another shop sample. Here's another batik. This, I couldn't resist. This one's so beautiful. I love it. I also wanted to remind you, and I forgot in part one, 
uh, to say that batiks are especially useful right now. They're great for making masks. Why? Because again, the dense fibers allow you to, uh, the mask, to achieve a higher um, protection rate. And I don't know if you've heard, but they have tested masks. And if you use quilting cottons, and then if you, especially if you use batiks, you can achieve up to 70 to 80% protection with that mask, which is pretty dang good, because the things that are better are the things that the hospitals are using, like the N95 mask. So this is actually protecting yourself pretty well. Sorry, let me just check here. Let's see if everybody is. Oh, hi, Mania. You, you're doing good deal. Um, I mentioned before that batiks are similar on the front and back. So let me just show you an example. This one's the front, and then here's the back. Um, you may notice a little bit of blurriness, a little bit of dotting um, on the back of a batik, but typically not so much. And I don't, I, to me, I just treat them as the front and the back is the same. Um, something else I forgot to say in part one is that batiks come in other forms than just cotton. Um, although that's really where I specialize because I like to make quilts with batiks. But batiks also come in rayon, like this lovely scarf that I got. <laughs> um, here's another scarf. Um, island batik, I'm an island batik ambassador and uh, they make scarves that you can buy. So uh, the, the store, the quilt store near you, maybe they carry it. Uh, if not, they may carry rayon batik that you can use to, um, everybody likes my, this is my dancing. <laughs> uh, but you can make um, scarves yourself then if you can find batik rayon. Uh, by the way, Always in Stitches, the store where I'm doing this live, um, has an online store and they carry Batik rayon. So if you're interested in trying that for dresses or scarves or uh, blouses that drape really well, if you like the look of Batik but you want rayon, check out their online store. It's always, always in Stitches onecom And they're the one, there's two Always in Stitches stores, but they're the one located in Noblesville, Indiana. Okay, so now I have um, covered briefly what uh, I talked about in part one. And oh, by the way, I forgot. Uh, if you have a moment, please heart this video for me. Um, and then maybe click share, uh, share the love with your quilty friends so that they can learn about the teeks too. Thanks. I really appreciate it. And Facebook does too. It gets me more views. Thanks. Okay, so talking specifically about uh, quilting, uh, about rayon, uh, excuse me, about batiks and how you might use them in your quilts. Um, the first question that typically comes up is, should I pre-wash? Well, the answer to that is uh, one you already know. Um, there are quilters who fall into one of either category. Either they um, will um, pre-wash everything or they will just take the chances and not pre-wash stuff. I'm kind of falling to the, I don't really care to pre-wash. Um, as far as batiks are concerned, good quality batiks are going to act just like your quilting cottons. So if you have a highly saturated purple or a bright deep red or a highly saturated blue, those are the ones you have to kind of watch out for. So those are the ones where you might want to take a moment and pre-wash those. Another reason that you might want to pre-wash um, your quilt fabric, um, if you're going to mix uh, batiks with quilting cottons, again, because of the way batiks are made, um, they are kind of boiled to take the wax off. Um, and that not only releases some of the excess dye, which is another reason why you probably don't really need to pre-wash batiks, but it does cause them to shrink a little. So if you're going to mix batiks with quilting cottons, you might want to pre-wash the quilting cotton so that they'll shrink together in the quilt at the same rate. Um, I mix the two a lot, and I haven't really seen a lot of difference in the amount of shrinkage, but believe me, you will see a little bit. Um, don't use bleach when you're uh, 
uh, washing your boutiques, if it kind of goes. Um, wash it on in cold, delicate. Um, you can put it in a dryer. Uh, I typically put it on low heat, or you can hang it up to dry. So that's how you would wash your boutiques. Pressing, pressing matters. Um, use a hot iron when pressing with boutiques, um, especially if you don't use a hot iron for cottons. Uh, really make it as hot as possible because boutiques, um, because they are very dense fiber, um, you will need to press to get them to stay. But once you do, they will stay and stay and stay and produce a very crisp result. Also, if you press to the side, they'll stay to the side. Or if you press open, boutiques will stay open a lot better. Um, they have a better memory, I guess, than quilting cottons will. As far as using steam or not, it's really up to you. Um, just if you need to get out of a stubborn wrinkle, use some steam. It's okay. Um, I'm just looking at my notes to make sure I don't forget to tell you anything. If you're going to use a batik um, rayon or a batik jersey knit, um, make sure you use a cooler iron for that. Don't use hot. Use the hot for your batik cotton. Your quilt thing fatigues. Now, needles. Um, there's a you can go online and, and uh, find a lot of discussion about what needle to use um, for fatigues, but I'll share what I use. Um, I highly recommend a Microtex sharp needle in an 8012. Now, um, you can go a little finer if you want to and do a 7511 or, or 7010, uh, but sometimes I find that a little bit too fine and it might tend to be too delicate for me, you know, like it might break, but it doesn't. But anyway, so I find the 8012 to be the perfect number to use, especially, see, when you're picking needles, let's talk needles for a second. You have to choose the type of needle to go with the fiber that you're going to be sewing. And then you have to match the number or size of the needle to the thread. So when I recommend 80-12, I'm talking about 50 weight thread. So if you're using 50 weight, Microtex Sharp 80-12. Um, I mentioned before that I'm an Island Boutique Ambassador. And as part of that, we get a box twice a year filled with boutiques and lots of other goodies from their partners. Well, this year, Schmetz became a partner in the Island Boutique Ambassador Program. And as a result, we got sent some needles to try out. And uh, one of those needles that they sent is a new kind, and it's called a chrome needle. Uh, let me hold that up. It uh, also says professional grade, um, but it says chrome. And um, this is size 8012. Uh, the chrome needle they really like with the teaks or with other fibrous type fabrics, dense fabrics, um, because it has not only a super sharp needle, which the Microtex Sharp also has, but the chromium that they use to coat the needle helps it glide between the fibers of your fatigue and maybe cause a little bit less hole. Um, it just pro provides a super fine stitch. Um, if, by the way, you're long arming, uh, I would recommend a size four or size 3.5 needle um, to long arm with, uh, with um, quilting, uh, with fatigues. You may notice with boutiques that you'll have to change your needle a little bit more often. The recommendation online, recommendation everywhere, is to change your needle every eight hours of sewing. Now, I will confess, I don't do that. I mean, I try to remember to change it often, but I'm kind of frugal, so I'm fighting that urge not to change it. But with boutiques, you will change it. And what I do is I listen. I listen for a kind of a, a thunking noise. A, it, 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 you can tell that your needle, it, it starts to make a sound that's kind of dull. And that's telling you I'm not 
getting through the fibers like I were, like I was five minutes ago. And that's when it's time to change your needle. It is not time to change your needle when it breaks. I mean, don't keep it in that long. I mean, obviously you have to change the breaks, but don't, don't overuse your needle. It, it, it certainly is not worth it ever, but it's definitely not worth it when you're working with the cheeks. And again, the reason you're gonna have to change your needle perhaps a little bit more often with the cheeks is because they're a little bit, uh, the threads are a little bit more um, higher count and a little bit closer together. So uh, that needle has a little bit um, harder time maybe of, of creating the stitch. And that's again, why it's important for you to use a sharp needle, Microtex Sharp or the Chromium. Also the Chromium uh, reduces friction. Um, so if you're doing uh, quilting, and you happen to be one of those fast people, the chromium needle, uh, because of that coating, helps um, helps it glide through the fibers and produce a much more even stitch. So I think if you try those new chromium needles, you will love them. Now, let's talk briefly about um, quilting. Um, I mentioned that you might want to try the chromium needles when you're quilting. Um, just because they'll help it glide through the, the fibers a little bit more evenly. Um, I always do a test before I start quilting so I can make sure that my tension is even. So, you know, do the, the three basic things. If your tension isn't working out, change your needle, um, re-thread the top, uh, redo the bobbin. And if it still doesn't get fixed, um, load another bobbin and then put that in. Um, sometimes you fill a second bobbin and it's filled better, the tension was better when you filled it, and suddenly your quilting problems will go away. Um, if you're going to mark batiks, I have heard some people say that um, they have trouble getting their marks out. I have never experienced that at all, but I do tend to use chalk markers, which tend to brush out. So um, I like chalk markers because I don't have to really worry about whether they're going to have trouble coming out. So as usual, anytime you're going to mark your quilt, always test it first. So if you're going to mark it on quilting cottons, test it. If you're going to mark it, uh, if you're going to mark a quilt made with batiks, be sure to test it first to make sure it'll come out. Um, I read somebody say that it, it removed the dye when they when they tried to get it out, and I've, I've just never seen that. If you buy good quality quilting batiks, um, they will act just like your regular cottons. Um, the color will be retained. Um, you won't have bleeding issues, again, unless they're highly saturated, and that's always a possibility. Um, and you won't have any trouble when you mark them. So just you know, keep that in mind. Um, here's an example of a quilt. Uh, uh, you can use, as far as batting, you can use whatever weight you like. I have used wool bats, I've used 100% cotton. I tend not to use the poly fluffy ones because that's just not something I personally like. Um, I'm taking a moment to see if any of you have any questions. Be sure to just type them in there. If I can't get to them during this presentation, I will uh, answer them after the video. And I think that's Pretty much what I wanted to tell you as far as how to sew and how to quilt with a teak. I hope I've um, answered your questions. Uh, oh, there was one thing I wanted to talk about as far as pre-washing. If you're, if you've got a highly saturated um, fatigue and you're pre-washing it and you're noticing that some of the dye is being released, you can, if, if this is prior to putting it in a quilt, you can use a product called Retain. I don't know if you've used this before, but this will um, set the dye. And you only want to use this product if it is a um, fabric that has not been sewn into a project yet. And what this will do is it will stop the bleeding. Now, what do you do if you have had some bleeding? Uh, some transfer of the dye. Um, don't throw it on a dryer. Uh, wash it again. Um, this time using a product called Synthropol. Um, Synthropol is a product that's designed 
to release the dye or to get it out back out of your quilt. So those are the two products. We happen to sell them here at the store, so I just picked them up so I could show you. Um, but those are two products that you can use to solve a problem if you think you've got a, a bleeding boutique or a bleeding cotton, for that matter. So I thought I'd end the show by showing you some examples of boutiques um, quilts because, frankly, I love them, and I just want to get you super excited about using boutiques. So some of these you may have seen in the first video, like this one, which is called um, Wicked Envy, but I really like it, so I thought I'd show it again. And no, I don't have a pattern for this one um, because obviously uh, Wicked is um, copyrighted, so I wasn't allowed to do that. Um, this one is called Honeycomb. I just love the vibrant colors in this one. This one is one of my most popular patterns. Um, it's called My Little Star. Um, if you are interested, you can click the Shop Now button in Facebook and go right to my shop. Um, this one was called, again, My Little Star. It's a very cute and very quick um, baby crook. Okay, let me show you some that we have not seen before. This one is called Sunrise Temple. I did this as a challenge for curved season. This one is a cute mini quilt. It's called Love and Twine, and it is a pattern up on my website. This one, I, I, I am a purple and green girl, if you don't know, purple, blue, green. Uh, I just love that. This one is called um, Vineyard, Modern Vineyard. I'm sorry if you can't quite see the whole quilt. I, I'm limited as to where I can step here in this classroom. But, um, this one is called Freshly Fallen. Don't you just love the variety of the teak? I mean, you can get those rich poppy colors, but if you don't like that, you can get more subtle colors. This one is called Broken Road. This is the original. Um, I then went on to pattern this uh, as a larger quilt, um, and that pattern is, is up on my website. But I, I love the, you know, the, the dusty background here, and then also how, how the colors pop against that. Oh, by the way, I'm doing a quilt along with Broken Road. Um, and uh, just using scraps, um, I picked two colors, uh, purple and orange, and, uh, and then white uh, as the background. And I'm just, uh, so you can join me and quilt along if you want. I love making things for Valentine's Day. Uh, this one's called All of Flutter, Hearts of Flutter. This one is called Heat Wave. Very modern, very fast quilt to make. And I, what I did, this was the original, very small. I uh, went on to pattern that and make it a larger quilt. Um, and it's in my shop and it's called Gems because I thought these little star things look like gems. And if you were to use bright colors against, say, a white background instead of this yellowish one, um, you could really get a lot of pop there. And there's a lot of negative space in that pattern for quilting and stuff, so I really like that. Um, let's see, this one is called... <laughs> I hate when I can't remember the names of things. Oh, yeah, Bear Cabin, <laughs> sorry. And I have a pattern online that's similar to this, but not quite the same with the log cabins, but you'll see it. This one's called Christmas in the Cabin.
I bet you didn't know that you could get uh, the teaks with patterns really, you know, like this printed on them, but this has some lovely, cute uh, Christmas motifs printed on it. And I really enjoy using that. This is called After the Rain because I quilted it with large uh, circles. And I, I also wanted to do um, like kind of a rainbow circle that, that gradually changes color. So I was really pleased to be able to get that effect with this. Again, I love, you know, modern quilts, you can, you've got all that negative space, that open space that you can do the, really see the quilt in. This is a table runner called Winter Tide. And I loved using all my greens and then that little uh, pop of a cardinal there, that little red cardinal, kind of surprise. Here's a cardinal you can't miss. Um, this one's called the uh, Solitude. Uh, Silent Witness. And I, I did that based on a photograph of a cardinal eating at our feet, two cardinals eating at our feeder uh, during the winter time. This is called Starburst, and I am designing this pattern now as a larger quilt, um, and that will come out soon in the fall. And I can't wait for you to see it because the colors that I used in the new sample, is it's a collection that won't be out until later, but oh my gosh, it's so wonderful. Um, it's a shout out to Jackie Kunkel. Um, her the, the her new collection for fall market is just gorgeous. This is called Fall Flight, and it will also be featured in fall market. So it's going to be a pattern that I'll release later in the fall, around October. This quilt is called Becky. As you see, I like to play with light and dark and, and the, the colors radiating, the lightness radiating from the center of a quilt. And then this is uh, my latest quilt and it's called Crystal, like ice cream. And this uses an AccuQuilt die called the Glorified Nine Patch. So it was super easy to cut out and super easy to make. I mean, you think curve piecing? Let me show it again. You see the curves. Um, what's easy with when AccuQuilt cuts out your pieces is they have they have notches on them that help you align everything, and your curves go together so fast. I love it. Um, if you want to know more about Crystal, just go to my blog and you can read about the process of how I got that made. Um, again, as a reminder, you can use batiks with your regular cottons if you feel like it. Um, to me, batiks are just, uh, well, all of my fabric to me is just, they're just paint. And so I use them whenever and wherever I want. Here's an example. Where I mixed um, cottons and batiks and I did it in this one too because I wanted a southwest view and I wanted to get the right color. So I hope you enjoyed the talk today. Again, if you missed um, the Quilting with Batiks Part 1, the video is on my blog. And this one will be saved on my blog in just a little bit. And you can, um, so if you came late, you can watch it then. Um, I really appreciate everybody stopping by. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're enjoying the Designers uh, Quilt Show, which is going on this week. Um, it will continue through. Saturday. Um, so we've got every single day there's a different set of designers being featured and it's at designersquiltshow.com. 
So I hope you drop by there. I hope you see the take a look at the classroom that will show you all the different free live demos and classes that we're doing all week long. Uh, make sure you visit all the quilters because uh, you get to see kind of a quilt show, the best quilts. You also get the shop of the shop and, you know, what could be better? You're in your PJs and you're at a quilt show. So anyway, thanks for stopping by. I hope you all stay safe and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.